Magandang umaga po mga kaibigan sa ating po namang special edition dito po naman sa ating uh, Wednesday Roundtable at Lido. Pag-uusapan po natin mga kaibigan ang mga kinakaharap na hamon ng Philippine National Police. We'd like to find out ano bang meron sa Philippine National Police, bakit mga PO1 ang nasa sangkot sa krimen. Of course, uh, nung araw pa man, sinasabi na ng Commission on Human Rights na kaya mataas ang bilang ng mga pulis na nababalitang umaabuso sa karapatang pangtao ay sapagkat sila ang nasa front line. Sila ang karaniwang humaharap sa publiko. Di tulad ng mga kawal ng pamahalaan na maaaring malayo ang destino. So, kada bayan, mayroong pulis. Okay, so yan pag-uusapan natin ngayong araw na ito. We're joined by uh, former Secretary Rafi M. Alunan of the DILG and he was once Secretary of Tourism. Narito rin po naman si uh, Commissioner Gwen Pimentel Gana from the Commission on Human Rights and we're joined by a good friend, uh, Pacifico Talplacido, mula po naman sa Philippine Public Safety College. Nakalulungkot, hindi nakarating yung ating kaibigan, nagkaroon ng emergency, si Attorney Ramil Gaba, who's the Chair of the Board of Criminology ng Professional Regulatory Commission. We'd like to find out ano ba yung mga naroon sa mga pagsubok na binibigay sa mga pulis upang mag-qualify. But let's start. Ano yung karanasan ninyo noong kayo na sa DILG tungkol sa mga pulis? Because policemen definitely are under the DILG. Let me begin, <coughs> Melo, by saying na may utang si Paul Batawil sa atin dalawa. Dapat Sisigilin nandito siya. Natin. Sisigilin natin siya. <laughs> At that time, uh, he was a kwan. He was a uh, battalion commander of the Special Action Force. Eh. Well, yung aking karanasan at the time, uh, panahon namin ni Presidente Ramos at kasama kami ni... Uh, uh, well, I, naalala ko, early on in 1992, when we took over, uh, nag-usap kami ni Presidente Ramos. Sabi niya, uh, tutulungan kita uh, sa reform ng Philippine National Police. Umpisahan natin sa early retirement ng uh, mga skalawags. Umpisa natin sa pinakamataas and then we'll work our way down. Uh, to make a long story short, uh, out of about 350 members of the command group uh, and after six months of reviewing the summaries of information of uh, these 350, we selected 67 generals and colonels for early retirement. And four years uh, down the road, until I left, uh, we were able to move out about 3,000 more. But as, about, as I was exiting, tinanong ko yung command group. Uh, nung nagumpisa tayo, um, ilang ba ang, ilang porsyento ba talaga ang uh, sa police force natin na mumubuhat ng institution sa kanilang bal mga balikat? Ang sagot eh, 30%. 30% yun lang? Yes, sir. 30%. Uh, ilang bang nangangailangan ng uh, retraining? Hindi naman mga tarantado. May pagkukulang lang. <clears throat> 50% na mediocre. So, sa mga tuwid, sabi ko, 20% ang mga bugok. Mga kailangan, mga tulisan na kailangan isipain. Yes, sir. Uh, paano nakalusot? Saan nagumpisa yan? Sir, sa recruitment at selection. Kasi many of them pay. Doon, doon pa lang, doon ng corruption. No? Tapos, uh, after they pay, eh, kailangan may return on investment yan. Eh. Oh. So, <clears throat> and that's where the syndication comes in. No? And it grows through time. So, <clears throat> ang sabi ko kay Presidente Ramos, sabi ko, sir, when we started out, 20,000 needed to be kicked out. Pero I was able to get rid of only 3,000 plus. Sabi ba, uh, bakit? Uh, ano bang problema? Sabi ko yung process. Due process is very important. Yeah. Okay? At the same time, we lost the military power to discipline. Mas mabilis sa armed forces. From the time the PCAINP was taken out of the uh, AFP and became a civilian institution, we had to go through civilian due process, which takes longer. Doon sa AFP, The military commander can already uh, discipline and uh, recommend for court-martial. At mabilis yung court-martial. 
I see. So ang recommendation ko, sir, <coughs> is that uh, we need legislation to reform the criminal justice system starting with law enforcement. Kasi ang pinag-uusapan natin dito, yung justice. Eh. Uh, pag nabenta yung investigasyon, di patay na, wala na justice. Kung nakalusot man, dumating sa prosecutor, pero linaglag ng prosecutor dahil sa binayaran, patay ang justice. O kung nakarating sa judge, pero magaling yung lawyer ng kabila, o bugok yung judge, patay na naman ang justice. Ganun na rin pagdating sa jails. No? So, along the line, kung titingnan natin yung criminal justice system sa highway, at any point in the highway, you can buy your freedom. No? So we need to undertake the reform of the entire criminal justice system, not just the Philippine National Police. Pero ang problema dyan sa reforming the criminal justice system, it will require sustainability. It will require continuity. Yeah. What one administration begins must be continued by the rest. Kasi we're talking about institutional reform here. Eh? No? And it's, it has nothing to do with the administration. This is about improving the quality of the bureaucracy mm -hmm. yeah. and to deliver basic services and uh, winning back hearts and minds of people yeah. who lost their faith in the government in the first place and took up armed struggle. No? So all of those are connected. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened. Yeah. No? So we continue, parang sisifus tayo, we roll up the ball, Mm -hmm. rock up the mountain and then we falls down again you know and ganun ang feeling natin ngayon okay all right mula sa commission on human rights how do you look at the problems being you know uh, published in today's papers about police inefficiency and brutality or if not uh, quote and quote stupidity well um, i just like to share that yesterday actually we had a high level meeting mm. with the hierarchy of the police uh, no less than general bato attended and general marquez and of course the commission on human rights uh, chair chito and the rest of the commissioners we were there and uh, we're, although the the discussion was more about how to you know strengthen our cooperation when it comes to the EJ case that are happening the documentation and all we have uh, at least uh, open an avenue for continuous cooperation with them and actually talking with them no that I think that's very important because we are faced with a lot of uh, accusations on the police of abuses especially in these cases as i said of ej case there are so many allegations that uh, the nan laban um, instances that uh, they have said that uh, you know the police were actually forced to kill are being questioned that is why uh, we are here and we extended our hand to them and they of course accepted and they are going to open their records to us. For that alone, at least it's already a step forward in terms of uh, trying to account for whatever happens and uh, happened and of course the concept of trans uh, transparency is being promoted. Uh, very well. Uh, Secretary Rafi, uh, you mentioned that you had uh, a complete dossier of personalities during your time. Yeah. Is, it is it impossible today to have the same uh, procedure? No, uh, because that's Yes, please. No, because that's part of uh, part and parcel of what we call counterintelligence and personal management, no? Yes. So, yung mga summaries of information of, uh, of each uh, police officer is collated and, and placed in their uh, 201 file, no? Mm -hmm. And that's what we reviewed, their 201 files, no? Um, I had a nine-man committee, and the nine-man committee was actually selected by the 350-man uh, command group that we were going to uh, investigate. Sila mismo ang nag-recommend. So I, my uh, vice chairman, for example, was uh, Secretary De Villa. Uh, ang qualifications were people of uh, probity, uh, uh, and uh, people who sincerely served their institutions, so AFP, PNP. No? So we had uh, Secretary Aguirre, who was then a, police, a general in the armed forces. Alex. Si Alex. Uh, we had uh, Edgar Dula Torres. Mm. Yeah. We had uh, Jimmy Barbers. No? We had Levi Malto. 
no? Oh. So all these guys were, you know, uh, very uh, people with good reputations. Hindi mo may pagtatanong, hindi mo tatawaran. Correct. Uh, so when we came, when we rendered our judgment, when we chose the final 67, after reviewing their SOIs and interviewing each one, interviewing each one, that was a five-month process. Eh? We finally came up with 67, and we said, look, <coughs> we're not going to uh, engage in trial by publicity here. We're just going to say that uh, you've opted to retire early so that you'll give way for young blood to rise up for the institution you love. Uh, nobody lost face. Nobody lost face. And we said, uh, but if some of you are going to be retired early with criminal cases, we'll be filing charges against you. Malino. Yes, sir, Malino. Oh. Okay. So we had very little resistance. A, a few, maybe about f seven of them, uh, went to the Supreme Court to say that uh, it was they, arbitrary. They disagreed. Dis uh, they disagreed, but voila, the Supreme Court turned them down. Yeah. Really? Uh, don't you think it would have been better had uh, President Digong done the same? Well, actually, uh, in the first month of uh, uh, President Duterte's administration, I bumped into. Um, Speaker uh, Alvarez, no? and I told him, I said, hey, if you want to really help Digong, you should pass legislation to reform the criminal justice system. So, I sent it to him, what happened to us. He said, that's a great idea. Trouble is, I think they got swept up, uh, swept away with, you know, by so many issues. I forgot. Actually, that should have been, from day one, yung, yun ang starting point. Clean house muna before you wage the uh, all-out campaign against drugs, crime, and corruption. Yeah. Okay, very well. Dahil sa kung ginawa yun, at least ma-identify, ma-ilawan kung sino-sino yung mga nagtatanggol at Kasi, nagtatago. Melo, if you are heavily infiltrated, no, the people, the, the, the Trojan horses there, will do everything to derail your campaign. Okay. And also to protect themselves, right? So, kahit nakagulo eh. Okay. But from the PPSC, uh, how do you treat your students? You know, this is very important. Mahalaga ito your special technical assistant. How do you do it at PPSC? Uh, thank you, uh, Sir Melo. Um, ang PPSC po ay isang uh, ahensya na under ng BILG. Kaya nga po si Secretary Alunan, ang aming boss non. Ito po ay yung PPSC po ay konsepto po ng Congress noon ng panahon ni General Gutang. Nung natanggal po na abolish ang PCINP, minabuti po ng Congress na mag-put up po ng Philippine Public Safety College. Kasi naniniwala ang Congress at the time na mas makakabuti daw po na separate training institution ang mag-train sa ating kapulisan. Kasi sa pag-aaral po nila, yung old setup ay dysfunctional, yun po ang sinabi nila, at mas makakabuting outside the NAPOLCOM and the Philippine National Command Structure ang PPSC. Kaya na under po kami sa, under po ng DILG. Ang chairman po namin, ang DILG secretary, bilang uh, board chairman po ng board of trustees, ang chief PNP, chief ng Bureau of Fire, bilang chairman ng NAPOLCOM. Nap, uh, bilang chairman pa rin po ng NAPOLCOM. Thank you po, secretary. At ang PPSC president po ay ex-officio member. Kaya meron pong say po ang PNP leadership pagdating po sa training system. Lalo na po sa PSBRC, yung recruit training. Entry level po ito, Sir Melo. Six months po ang PPSC, ini-train po namin. Academic phase po ito. Pagkatapos po ng six months, itaturn over na po namin sa Philippine National Police. Ito po yung mas uh, importanteng aspeto ng training, yung field training program. Ito na po yung may close supervision na po ang PNP sa mga recruit. Opo, opo, yun po. Six months lang po kami, academic pace po yan. Six months. Pagkatapos, ibibigay po namin sa mga regional training, regional, uh, police regional offices for OJT sa field training nila sa traffic, sa investigation, sa patrol. Six months po. Doon po nagkakaroon po ng problema. Wala na pong supervision po ang PPS doon. Ang PNP po meron. Kaya lang po, nakita rin po ng PNP leadership nung panahon po nung Senate hearing po ni, ni Senator Laxon na meron close meron na pong loose supervision po ang mga ang, P, ang mga senior police officer sa mga bagong recruit. Doon po ang nakita even senator po, po ay nag-agree sa finding ni General Laxon. So doon po, ngayon po yung PPSC po uh, 
Pagka meron pong may problema sa training, iti, uh, kami naman po ay positibo na sa pananaw po namin, positibo tinitingnan. Pag sinabi ng Camp Krame, na kulang ang leadership, kulang ang training sa PPSC, pinupunan po talaga namin yun sa pamamagitan po ng close coordination at collaboration. Last week nga po, si General De Leon, ang aming presidente po, ay nakipagpulong doon sa bagong liderato po ng DHRDD. Ito po yung unit ng PNP na nakatutok sa training po, yung Directorate for Human Resource and Doctrine Development Division ng, ng PNP National uh, uh, Headquarters. Si General Talinio, siya po ngayon ang bagong... Opo, at saka yung PNP Training Service. Doon po sa pagpupulong na yon, sinabi ni General De Leon na patuloy naming... Uh, nire-resolve ang kakulangan ng, sa training, lalong-lalo po sa aspeto ng, ng karakter at saka discipline. Kaya nag-introduce nga po siya ng framework para lalo pong mapagtatibay po yung discipline okay. at saka karakter sa yeah. police po. Very well. Secretary, uh, the Philippine National Police is said to be uh, national in scope, civilian in character. Pero how do we insulate the Philippine National Police from police characters? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well uh, again, that, uh, uh, that, that that begins with uh, uh, firm discipline, no, uh, proper selection of men, uh, and then uh, uh, proper guidance. Because uh, no, no matter what, the police will have to work with uh, the local officials, no. Um, they they are the frontliners, yeah. Uh, of, of government to deal with the public and uh, local government units as well as the national government. No, So it's inevitable that they'll have to deal with uh, politicians. Uh, it is a very tricky question because uh, in other states, politics is left out. It's, they never use politics to intrude uh, with uh, the workings of the police and, and the military, but over here, in the Philippines, uh, everything is politicized, mm -hmm. right? Precisely. Uh, even in areas that where they're not supposed to encroach, they encroach for their own vested interests, you know? So how do you insulate, how do you protect the military and the police from, from that? I think, the, I think the military is doing a better job of insulating their people. Because first of all, they're not territorial, they, they move around, you know? They're mobile. Yes. And second, because of their powers of discipline, they're able to harness the, their people much better than uh, the police. Uh, the police are basically under the operational control of the local chief executives. Precisely. Right, and uh, so uh, perhaps it's time to revisit uh, the local government code as well as the PNP law and see how uh, we can reorganize the whole thing. Uh, there are suggestions to the effect that uh, we return to a national police a la Philippine Constabulary, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but under the AFP, right? So you're trying to militarize again? No, no, that's, that's just a con. No, no, that's just a concept. It's but fun. the local police will be under the local uh, governments. So separate ang local uh, police from the, police. from the national guard, so uh, to speak. Uh, it's a national guard concept then, eh? but, uh, but uh, military. Uh, the others dis uh, disapprove of it. They said, no, uh, it should still be a, a civilian force, but uh, they should not at all be uh, assigned to local governments. No? Mm -hmm. Ang may hawak dyan would be headquarters and the commander-in-chief. Okay. No? But the local police should be, uh, should be detached already. Uh, they should be talagang local. Okay. Uh, but uh, I see a problem there because if uh, we are to believe claims and reports today that there are local government officials who are themselves into criminal activities, correct. then we have a problem with the police. That's correct. And that's the reason why there's also resistance uh, to that idea. Because the reason why we keep on insisting on the, PC, on, on the INP, or uh, sorry, the PNP, to be a national force is precisely to prevent local officials from using our police as private armies. Mm. If you recall, during our time, we launched Oplan Paglalansag. Yeah, Oplan Paglalansag was supposed to break up private armies and to recover loose firearms. And that's what Digong calls the Alunan Doctrine. Because he, he was the 
he was the best enforcer of that in Region 11. Uh, and and uh, we broke up a lot of private armies. And, tho some, and those private armies uh, uh, in, in, involved uh, moonlighting policemen and military men under the employ of uh, the political warlords. No? So we recovered those firearms, we broke them up. The rule was, if a VIP walks around with more than three armed men, with, no, with more than two armed men, with him. That's already a private army, so we break it up. Uh, so, yeah. so we limited it to only two. Okay. Uh, pero I also remember there was this movie actor who had a lot of uh, armed Yung bodyguard people. na yon, yung bodyguard na yon must be uh, authorized by the uh, there's this unit sa PNP. PSPG. PSPG. Uh, Police Security Protection Group. That's the, that's the new term now. Before it was some other term. Now it's the some PSPG. Term but it should be authorized by the PSPG. Okay. Uh, during the time of uh, President Ramos, there was this movie actor who was caught with so many bodyguards. Sabi niya, hindi ko bodyguard yan. Fans ko lang yan. Pero armado. Ayun, <laughs> yun. But that's another case. Pero ha, ano po ang ginagawa ng Commission on Human Rights? Have you received complaints about police abuses of late? Of course, kasi we are present in all the provinces. Eh. May regional offices kami. So doon mismo, maraming mga complaints. Yung illegal detention, yung mga ganyan, harassment sa police, may pang mga domestic violence, ang police ang mga <laughs> involved, mga asawa nila and all. No? Oh, so mga ganong kaso marami. Um, ang ano namin is that what we do now para positive, we actually uh, have yung training program mga training programs on human rights with the police. Ah, kaya nga gusto ko sang tan tanungin ang Public Safety College kung meron silang module on human rights because before, we used to have a partnership, di ba? Yung parang ano, oh, oh, and then we would also engage even the army through their human rights office and even dito sa PNP, meron silang human rights affairs uh, office, HRAW nila. So doon kami, uh, we help them in uh, promoting human rights. Ah, uh, Okay. Secretary, in as much as you're leaving us in a couple of minutes, anong tingin mong kailangan gawin para mawala yung bahid ng pagdududa at takot ng mga mamamayan sa pulisya? Mahirap na question yan. Because we're talking about human nature here. Eh. And uh, alam mo, yung karakter ng, ng ating lipunan at this point, we're still evolving eh. Uh, if you compare that to a human being, we're still in the adolescent stage. We're still evolving. We're still trying to mature. So, kaya ta nakakagulo tayo rito in terms of uh, issues of incompetence and irresponsibility. But, uh, because we're like adolescents when we think eh? and when we behave. And uh, that does not excuse uh, the old politicos. They're still thinking like adolescents. Eh? Uh, no, but... Uh, to be more uh, specific, we have a feudal culture here. I'm talking about cultura. No? We're very feudalistic, and meaning to say, akong hari hari dito, sunod kayo sa akin, right? And that's what the reason why we have an oligarchy. That's the reason why we have political dynasties, right? Uh, that's the reason why uh, uh, we have uh, local chief executives who who behave like uh, they're the only ones who know better, and sunod lang kayo, right? Uh, that has been going on for centuries. It's a, it's a syndrome. It's a syndrome. Um, and we have, to, we have to bring up our culture to the next level. We have to evolve. For as long as we have this mindset, paikot uh, ikot lang yan. We'll keep on uh, experiencing the same problem. Mm -hmm. no, over and over again, manifested in different ways. But uh, the root cause of which is yung kultura natin needs reforming. If we're talking, you know, you see the pin here? Yeah. Uh, it says here, tunay na pagbabago. No? Mm -hmm. This is what uh, we were campaigning about with uh, President Digong during the, you know, the, camp the presidential campaign. Mm -hmm. The tunay na pagbabago starts with self. Mm -hmm. yes. we're, we're, we're not talking about, you see, you, you change the structure, you change the system, but you don't change the self. Walang mangyayari sa structure at system. 
kasi tao pa rin nagpapatakbo niyan eh. No? Kung hindi nagbago yung tao, di bali wala yung yung effort. Sayang lang ang pagod. No? At saka, at saka yung pera. So, to, to make a long story short, we have to change ourselves if you want improvement in the way we do things. Okay. Thank you very much. We will excuse you. You have to attend to a family affair. Yeah. Let's pause for a break. Sir, I get your number. Okay. Tuloy tayo sa ating palatuntunan. Siguro, you, you can tell us, how is a Filipino, a Juan de la Cruz, no? How does he get into the police service? Ano yung basic requirements? Please tell us. Ah, oh, sir. Salamat po. Yung basic requirement po ng pagpupulis, nakalagay po sa Republic Act 6975, unang-una po dapat he must be a Filipino citizen, uh, at least 21, but not more than 22 years, 30, 30 years old, at least 5 po sa lalaki at 5 to sa babae, college graduate po ang minimum qualification po as entry qualification po ng police natin. Dapat po pumasa sa, dapat eligible or kaya si, uh, eligible po o kaya civil service or kaya po NAPULCOM. Tatlo po yan. Uh, board passer po sa kanyang profession. Uh, NAPULCOM, eligibility. At yung civil service po, pwede po tatlo po. At po, sa po sana sa drug test. Sa drug test po. Yan ang requirement po yung drug test. Tsaka yung physical, fitness, at tsaka medical po. Tsaka meron po silang IQ test. At sila po ay nag-undergo po ng, ng screening process kagaya po ng background investigation. EBI po sa kanila po. Yung pong neuropsychiatric screening, sino gumagawa? Ang, kam, ang kamkrami po, ang, meron po silang uh, PNP medical uh, service uh, na nagkakandak po ng neuropsychiatric examination sa kamkrami po. At saka sa mga regional, regional headquarters po, meron po silang mga neuropsychiatric uh, Uh, services para po sa mga recruit. Effective po naman kaya ito? Uh, sa palagi ko po, kasi nun po, uh, ina-address po talaga natin kung yung kanilang kapasidad mentally at saka yung behavior po, yun po ina-analyze. Pit ba yung tao, yung recruit para sa police service? Uh, kung mentally sound siya, uh, at least na pasado sa sa aspeto po yan. Okay. I've heard in some regions, kailangan manuhol para makapasok sa training. And uh, the rate is from 500,000 to even a million just to be a trainee. Uh, meron pong issue po na ganyan. Uh, uh, meron pong napabalitan ganyang, na ganyang kalakaran. Pero ang kamkrami at tinitingnan po yung aspeto niyan. Kasi sa mga, mga region, gusto talaga nila na pinapatulan po sa kanilang mga recruit ito eh para makapasok ka agad. Ang laki talaga ng... Ngayon po kasi, ang, ang recruit, PO1, mataas na rin po ang sweldo at tataasan pa rin doon. Kaya ang dami pong gustong magpulis. Ang dami po. Yung mga nag-a-attempt naman na mag-bribe, na maglagay, eto naman sigurado po yung mga recruit na merong uh, disqualification. So yun po dapat tingnan din ng literato po ng Kamkrami. Sa PPSC po, wala po kaming say sa recruitment. Hmm. Kaya ang recruitment, tapos training, pero ang training, hindi pa po namin talaga kami ang entirely responsible. Kasi sa mandatory training po ang PPSC, mga specialized training sa PNP po. Pero sa mandatory, sir, a combination of uh, PNP, uniform, at saka ng civilian, uh -huh. ang setup. Sa palagay po na yun po, yan po ang ideal setup. Unique po sa atin yan eh. Dati-dati, it's purely... Uh, police, milit uh, uniform service and training, pero ngayon po meron din pong involvement, participation ang, ang civilian. Pero hindi naman po civilian na nagte-training sa mga police uh, subject. Pwede oh, Sige ma'am, no, maganda to, maganda to. Sige, tayong tatlo. Sige, please, please take the microphone. Because ang sabi ng ano, ng police, um, kahit na daw gustuhin pa man nila na mag-recruit, di naman maraming polis, di ba? Meron daw limitation na number lang, kunwari ikaw sa isang region, ganito lang ang allotment mo, kasi nga nakuha na siya ng ibang regions. Meron daw yun yearly eh. May kota. Ah, po. Yearly po. Uh, um, ang po naman po sir, ang PNP, nag-recruit po on the average sa... Uh, from 5,000 to 10,000 na uh, new police officer a year, a year po. E ito po ay dinidistribute po ng, ng Camp Krame sa mga region na kukunti pa po ang may kakulangan ang police. 
Meron kasi silang tinatawag na yung, yung factors to determine the size and strength of the police. Kung yung peace and order uh, condition, may problema, dadagdagan po nila dyan. Yung actual demands for police service, dadagdagan nila. Yung population to ratio. Basta ang bottom line po ng PNP, meron po silang population to uh, ratio, population ratio, one policeman for every 1,000 uh, inhabitants at the minimum. Ang ideal po sa kanila, one policeman for every 500 inhabitants. Yun ang target talaga. Yun po talaga ang target. Kaya continuous po ang recruitment ng PNP. On the average po nationwide, nasa naglalaro lang po na 1,000 to 750 along that area. Nationwide, police uh, ratio. Ah, okay. Uh, ayun po. Malapit na rin po. Nga nasa 1,000, no, 1 to, to 750, something like that. Okay, with a the population of 100 million. 104 point something million, eh ilan dapat yung pulis mo rito? Di ba? Dapat yung malaking pulis na yan. I-apply po natin, talagang malaki pa po ang kakulangan, Ma'am Gwen, doon sa sinasabi natin. Ang ginagawa na lang po ng national leadership, pinaprioritize po talaga yung areas na kailangan pang palakasin. Lalo yung mayroon pong problema sa insurgency. Sa peace and order, yung may mga, may mga private armed groups, mayroong organized crime group, yung malakis po ang mataas ang incident ng drug uh, problem ng isang lugar, dinadagdagan po talaga ng national leadership. Yan, ha po. Okay. Ma ma mabuti kong ganun. Kaya lang, ang problema natin, uh, meron ba kayong ginawang pagsusuri sa PPSC at sa Commission on Human Rights? Bakit yung na-involve at yung sinasabing sangkot sa mga paglabag sa batas, eh yung mga PO1, nasa entry level pa lang. Ano kaya? <laughs> Salamat po sa Ramon. Pero bago po yan, yung PPSC po ay may na, mayroong kasulukuyang na may umiiral po ng MOA, ang PPSC at saka CHR, na palakasin po yung CHR. Bawat subject, subject po ng PNP, mayroong pong human rights dimension. At nagkaroon na rin po kami ng PPSC Human Rights Affairs Office. Resulta po yan ng, opo, resulta po yan ng, pa, ng MOA with the CHR. At saka yung mga training directors po namin, Umatin po talaga na mga human rights uh, conscientization seminar. Ayan po ang contribution po ng CHR sa PPSC. Para okay. maramdaman po ng, ng training, ng trainer po, na talagang human rights uh, protector ang mga trainers nila, ang mentor, ang mga training director sa lahat ng regional training center po ng PPSC. Ngayon sinabi ni Sir Medlo na yung, at this early, PO1, sorry, PO1 na i-involve po sa kalukuhan ng pulis natin, eh, actually, meron din po ang mga ilan-ilan naman. Pero sa level po ng training, pagka ang mga pulis po ay hindi nakaka-comply uh, sa requirement, may problema sa, sa attitude, may problema po sa academics, ito po yung ibinabalik namin, return to unit po. Ngayon po, pagdating doon, hindi na namin kontrolado kung nakakabalik pa. Pero meron pong incident din sa amin na... Uh, hindi, pina-return to unit na, return to service, pero nakakabalik po. Uh, meron, pero hindi naman po yan ang kalakalan. Meron lang po kaman nakikita at in-address in na po yan ng headquarters. Pinadala na po sa atensyon po ng PNP yung, yung observation po namin na ganyan. Okay. Mula po sa Commission on Human Rights, anong tingin nyo? Meron ba kayong pagsusuri? Meron ba kayong data to support the perception that PO1s, PO2s, are the ones involved in nefarious crimes and human rights violations. Wala pa namang ganyang uh, study kaming ginawa. Ano? Pero ikaw, ikaw na rin nagsabi kanina na siguro because they're the first responders, tapos kung wari, bago sila makapasok doon, eh, uh, marami pa silang ginawa, naglagay sila o nagbayad. So para bang return of investment, sinabi mo rin kanina na point out yun na Uh, bumabawi. Di ba? Yung paakala nila na nandyan sila hindi para magsilbi. but kung hindi to make a living? Eh, kung ganyan ang attitude ng isang polis, huwag ka nalang magpulis. Kasi, excuse me, kasi ang ano talaga, ang polis, you're there to protect and to serve. Hindi, nagkataon daw po, meron sabi to protect and collect. Ay, naka. <laughs> oh, yun, yun na sabi, pero hindi ko mas sinasabing yun ng kalakaran. Oh, yeah. Pero at least, Uh, you are also aware of the lifestyle ng ating mga pulis. Uh, it's national in scope. So pag sinabing national in scope, you could be assigned anywhere in the Philippines. 
But yung bang ginawa ni General De La Rosa some time ago na merong skalawag police na dadalhin mo sa Marawi, ano namang kasalanan ng mga taga-Marawi to merit that kind of inefficient police elements? No? Ano tingin nyo? Uh, sa palagay ko, eh, yung strategy na yun does not solve the problem at all. You know, uh, dapat ang, siguro maganda din yung ginawa ni, ano, ni Secretary Alunan. In other words, you review the dossier of uh, the service that the, the people, that the policemen have rendered actually in uh, the long time that they've been in service. Tapos, you have to clear the, you know, scalawags out of the police kasi system because after all, they give the police the bad reputation. Itong pagpadala mo doon sa Marawi, tama nga yung pinoint out nyo, Kawawa naman yung mga tao sa Marawi. Anong klaseng policemen ang nandun na, na magbabantay sa kanila? At saka, does it mean na kung corrupt ka dito pagdating mo doon, hindi ka uli magiging corrupt? E eh, dala mo yung sarili mo, yung iyong mga values at paninindigan sa buhay. So, sa palagay ko, hindi tama yung strategy yun. Yeah, napakaganda dahil kung hindi naman ka sa Marawi, sa Basilan, ano naman kasalanan ng mga taga-Basilan? There was a time, ang Tapunan was Bicol Region. Uh -huh. Sabi ko, anong kasalanan natin sa Bicol at ito ang uh, padadalang mga tao? Kung talagang inefficient yan, alisin na dahil okay. sa deadwood yan. Oh, yes. Di ba? Okay. Ngayon, sa inyo, sa uh, Philippine Public Safety College, you also train other elements no? sa uniformed service. Pati po yung training commands ng PNP also fall under PPSC, right? I, I reviewed your structure pati yung mga nasa Bureau of Jail Management and Penology, tapos yung nasa Bureau of Fire Protection. Pero ang sabi nung ilan, pag ika yung bumbero, ang makamandag yung bago. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know kung anong pwedeng gawin doon. Ano tingin nyo? Oh, oh, tama po, Sir Melo, yun, Na ang PPSC po ay uh, hindi lang po ang PNP, ang, ang training sa PNP ang mandato po ng PPSC. Kasama po, kasama po yung BGMP at saka yung Bureau of Fire. At mer ang PPSC ay may meron pong Regional Training Center. Lahat po ng Regional Training Director po namin ay police officer din po. Yan po ang kandyan, ano? So, uh, ang aming director ng PNPA ay uh, police general. Ang director po ng National Police Training Institute, ito po yung may control po sa lahat ng Regional Training Center nationwide. Labimpito po yan. At ang namumuno po niyan ay isang police general. Gayun din po ang training center para sa BGMP, ang namumuno po isang general sa BGMP. At ang fire po ay pinamumuno ang din po ng isang fire commissioned officer. So lahat po, ang PPSC ay, iyon po ay, 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 ay umbrella organization for public safety, PNP, Bureau of Fire, at saka BGMP. Okay. We'd like to acknowledge, narito na po naman si Chief Inspector Rodel uh, Trumata. Siya po yung nagkapagsalita ng Philippine National Police Academy. Balitaan nyo nga kami, ilan ang estudyante nyo ngayon sa PNPA? Uh, magandang umaga po muna sa lahat. Um, ang aming kadete po ngayon ay binubuo ng 862 cadets po, um, out of four classes po yun. So nagbimintay lang ko kami kasi ng populations na population na minimintay na 1050 cadets na yun lang po ang kayang tustusan ng ating government. Okay, dito sa bilang na 800 na to, ilan ang mapupunta kaya sa police? Ilan ang mapupunta sa fire service at sa BGMP? This year po we have a graduating cadets of 103 cadets po. Kasi um, sa final year po kasi sila pipili anong service preference nila kung BGMP BFP or PNP. Ngayon po ang magjo-join po ng aming ating BGMP ay labing anim sa fire naman po ay 11. Then sa the rest po yung majority ng 100, eh, almost 76 cadets will be joining the Philippine National Police. Okay. What does it take for one to be a cadet at the PNPA? Um first thing po is mahabang proseso po 'yon kasi out of 25,000 applicants every year ang dami pong interesado yung mag-join because of they, they want to become a member of the uniform service. Ang qualification po primarily po ay kailangan a natural born Filipino citizen. Ang age po natin ay 18 to 22 years of age at the time of admission. Kasi ang admission po namin ay May 1st of the following year. Kasi one whole year round po ang pagtanggap ng application form. And then um, single with no parental obligation at least senior high school high school graduate 
Um, meron na po kami transition for K-12 graduate. So, ang first batch of graduates po natin ng K-12 this coming year, 2018. So, those um, the students will be graduating by earlier than April are qualified to take the examination. And then, no derogatory records, no pending cases, it's particularly yung may issues sa moral turpitude. And then, um, mentally and physically fit for cadetship training program. Moral turpitude. Ano po bang definition ng moral turpitude? <laughs> <laughs> Maganda rin pag-usapan yan, di ba? Ano ba ikaw? Pagka-torpe ba yan? Iba, iba yun. <laughs> And then, then, paano yun? Kasi uh, marami kayong requirements. Uh, hindi biro makapasok dyan. Pero meron bang neuropsychiatric screening? Actually, yung first phase po kasi first step is to uh, download an application form from our website at www.penpa.edu.ph or mag-join sila sa FB group namin sa PNPA. And then, pag nakapag-secure na po sila ng application form, if you fill out lang po nila yung form, then ipapadala na sa amin through express mail. Then, meron din pa kaming online na application. So, yung application po, kukolektahin namin yun and then i-evaluate, i-assess if they comply with all the requirements yung attached birth certificate nila, plus yung BMI nila, nakalagay po doon sa application form. So kung sino po yung ma-qualify, ipapublish po namin by October yung list of qualified examinees. Titignan lang po nila sa website or sa Facebook. Afterwards po, meron kaming 28 test centers nationwide. Sa 28 test, test centers na po yun, sabay-sabay po mag-exam yun sa October 29, half day, from 7 to 9, ito 12 noon. And then, intayin po nila ang resulta probably by first, second week of November or first week of December para po mag-physical agility test po sila. And may schedule po kami na by batch by January. And then, yung papasa po sa agility test, kung mayroon po kaming top 1,500 lang every year po yan eh. Sino po yung mag-top sa 25,000 na 1,500 ranker, top ranker, yun lang po yung magpo-proceed sa physical agility test. Oh. Scholars. Scholars, yeah. Scholars po. The government, allowance dyan? Actually, sir, the government is spending 2.3 million more or less each cadet for four years of cadetship training program. Okay. And then, dung papasa po sa physical agility test, sa 1,500 po, matitira lang dun mo, more or less 800 or 900. Ganun po nang re-range kasi may mga absent po tayo. Dun po dun sa magpapasa, dun yung po yung magtitake ng neuropsychiatric examination. Dun po sa neuropsychiatric examination, 50% na humaiiwan lang doon kasi more or less po sa 900, 500 or less lang po ang pumapasa. Doon po kami ngayon mamimili for medical exam, yung po yung papamedical natin, doon na kami pipili ng more or less 300 cadets for that incoming batch. 300? Then, 300 lang. 300 lang po. After four years po, expect po natin na mababawasan po yung mga bagsak sa academics, meron po mga problema sa training, And then, um, matitira lang po dun is more or less 280, 250, or 240. Pag ganun lang po yan. Kaya ko kasi naitanong yun, yung inyong uh, mga fatalities, if you may. No? Uh, dahil lang sa kuya na third year, saka makikick out, saan mapupunta yan? With the kind of training that you've given them, hindi kaya maging lawless elements yan later at uh, yun din ang sakit ng ulo nyo. Actually, sir, um, napakagandang tanong po yan. Um, bawat taon ho kasi may kanya-kanyang um, sabi natin na pressure na nagva-vary from class to one to another. Ang mortality, ang fatality po namin ng mga resigning is for the first 45 days, yung adjustment period, it um, almost hundreds of them are like, are quitting. Maybe they, may, they, they underestimate the training. Naakala nila parang simpleng marcha, jogging lang. Pero yun lang ang kulang sa kanila, yung physical and psychological prepar mental preparation. Yung adjustment period yun, kaya po hinahabol minsan namin na kung maaari, kung they are not decided to continue anymore, we give them chance. And then we pay them, uh, we gave them their allowance to go back to re-enroll. For the second year naman po, ito po yung may mga natatanggap naman ho kami mga college graduate na. So they are second option. yung meron naman po na nakakapasok ng mga third year college, so one more year for their criminology course or other courses, pwede naman po o yung iba po may trabaho. Para naman po sa mga high school graduate, good start na po sa kanila kasi once they will not able to complete the training program, meron na po sila na iipon na pera. 
So more or less 200 to 300,000 po may ibibigay naman po ng ng ng, ng PPA and PAA or ng PPSC to re-enroll and start another Uh, college na lang po yun, pero pwede naman po kasi independe po sa receiving college or universities if they will accredit you po yung mga subjects na nakuha nila sa amin. So it's not, uh, they, are, they are not going back to zero. They have something to hold uh, on to. Yes, sir. Oh. And then at the same time po, yung mga, they intend to look for job. May mga alumni po kami. They, especially po sa, na, ino-offeran po sila ng job. Kasi, uh, siyempre, they all spent already three years of training. So, pwede po sila pumapasok as security officer. Most of our cadets na ex-cadets or former cadets of the academy, they were hired as security officers sa mga malls. Yun po yun yung isa sa mga... Kasi, ang hirap lang po kasi kung they failed from the subject. Kasi two, two subjects po ang i-failed mo. Kasi meron po kaming maintaining grade eh, dapat eh. Ang raw score mo sa sampung items, ikailangan seven ang correct answers mo. So, 170, yun po yung aming passing mark. So, kung dalawa po yung pinagsak niyang subject, basic, babagsak, uwi, talaga siya. Yung isa naman po, kung bumagsak po siya sa medical, nagkaroon po siya ng sakit. Although, sagot po ng government yun, ng PNPA, yung kanyang medication, pero if the recommendation of the attending physician na hindi na siya fit for training, has to go out. Ngayon, meron po rin kami-kaming conduct Kapag medyo matigas po ang ulo, violator po siya sa loob, pag bumagsak po siya ng passing marks sa after semester, he will be kicked out from the academy. And then meron din po kaming honor code in honor violation, yung lying, cheating, and deceiving or stealing. Kapag po yan na-violate niya at na-convict po ng honor committee, i-uphold po yun ng PNPA, automatically dismissal from the academy. So yun yung mga bagay na hindi naman pwede natin i-compromise Tatanggapin ho natin sila, hindi naman ho tayo magpag-graduate ng honor code violator, unfit for service kasi may sakit. Hindi ho mapasa yung criminal law subjects, yung mga basic po ng police procedures, hindi niya ho ma-absorb. O hindi ho magaling bumarel kasi pag may problema ka rin po sa pistol handling, sa firing, maaari din i-turn back mo yon or you will be joined the next lower class, or you will be dismissed from the academy. So we have to maintain the quality and standard of the academy. Okay. Yes, please, 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 please. Because I'm so curious, di ba? There are, I want to find out, kasi importante, napakaganda nga nitong topic because we have to know, ano ba talaga yung training before a police becomes an officer or enters the police force, di ba? Importante yun. So, from your college, di ba, a high school graduate can enter and be a police for four years. How about a college graduate? Kung ari criminologist ako, do I have to go through your college? No. Ma'am, um, ganito po kasi, um, yung PNPA po is a center for um, leadership and character development. Hindi po siya criminology school. So, ibig sabihin po kasi... Do I have to go through the four years? Yes, ma'am. Um, for example, uh, graduate ka na po na pumasok sa PNPA, you have to go back to the first uh, year. Kasi ma'am, ang program po niya is 70% academics, 30% training program. Okay. So, ay, ibig ko sabihin, di siyempre nang galing na graduate na sa inyo. Apa. We are we also know that pag graduate ka ng PMA, you can actually choose to join the PNP. So, police ka, di ba? Um, pag PNA graduate ka, pwede ka maging army, pwede no, ka maging... No, no, no. Hindi na, hindi na ubra. Hindi na, hindi, na ubra. hindi na, dahil yung uh, PMA is just for the three branches of service. Army, Air Force, and Navy. PNPA is exclusively. Dito na talaga exclusively. Uh, either for eh, the PNP. Si General Bato? No, he was a PMA graduate yes. dahil hanggang 1992 yan. Ah, yun ang cut-off. Okay. Cut off. Yun ang cut-off. Kasi off. I was wondering, paano yung curriculum, di ba? They have to have the same thinking when you train the policemen. You know, dapat iisang, iisang ano lang para you have like minds, di ba? Hindi, pero iba na yung Philippine National Police Academy training dahil for BJMP ka, Bureau of Fire Protection and PNP, right? Oh. Um, Tung sa sinasabi nga nila na kung identical yung curriculum ng Philippine Military Academy at ng Philippine National oh. Police, ay hindi po kasi public safety po kasi ang focus ng, Fil PNP. ng Philippine PN PNPA po. PNP. Kasi sa kanila po sa Philippine Military Academy is they are more on uh, insurgency operation, meron po sila sa militaristics, more on military operation, and mission-oriented po sila. Kasi po ang PNPA, more on community-oriented. 
So meaning to say po ma'am uh, to, exp to expound it more kaya po kirinate ang PNPA kasi nga di ba yung idea na more on militaristic character, discipline. Yeah, so Pero ang PNPA po civilian in character but we have to embrace the military discipline. So yung sinasabi po natin na curriculum, naka-focus po kami sa community. We have to win back the trust and confidence not only by the by the community alone but also yung mga uh, sabi na natin mga infested area kailangan ho namin kunin yung loob nila ang isang operation po para sa amin sa PNP successful po yan kung wala pong loss of lives both victim and the criminal yes. and the property hindi po kami uh, ang aming objective basta ma-comply yung mission may collateral damage hindi po ganun ang thinking ng PNP Sa, sa PNP Human Rights uh, Guidebook, di ba? Nakalagay doon that any death resulting from an operation is a failed operation. Yes, ma'am. So, That's are true. you upholding that? Yes, ma'am. Um, sinurog siguro doon naman kahit uh, ako lang po, uh, ang lagi kong pinapaalala sa mga kadete natin, na, sa amin, sa academy, na hindi naman siguro tinuro sa bahay kung paano magsinungaling, magdakaw at manloko, at lalo-lalo ang pumatay. Sa loob po ng academy, primarily, ang tinuturo ho namin ito ay respect for life, value of life, and then yung, yung trust and integrity, dapat nandiyan dyan na uphold mo yan. Ngayon, kapag graduate po nila ng academy, yun po yung pinangahawakan namin. So, hindi naman siguro sinabi sa loob ng academy na pag may kalaban, eh, kailangan you take your the life. May respect for life po tayo. Number one po yun kasi, um... Hindi ko man po may expound na mabuti. Meron po kaming seven subjects ng leadership and character development subjects sa loob ng formal instruction. How about human rights? Subjects Meron and human po kaming subject ng human rights. Binibigay po ito na sa final year nila para uh, yung mga current issues involving policemen and other sectors in the community violating such para meron po silang comprehensive orientation about human rights. Um, we invite we are inviting representatives from tri-bureau services and experts, even from at the academy, para po magkaroon po sila ng complete um, perspective at idea what is happening now in the society. Okay, napakaganda. Pero ang problema ko ito, uh, Commissioner, kahit bagong pare ka ordain na punta sa isang parokya, iba yung parokya. Iba yung nakitang parish priest. In the same manner, isang bagong tinyente na punta sa isang istasyon. Eh, kanino matututo yan? Siyempre, may role models. Don't you think we also have a problem of role models in the uniformed service, uh, Commissioner? Uh, yun na nga, katulad ng pinoint out mo, pag napadala na siya sa presinto, ano ba yung kanyang chief doon? Diba? Anong pamamalakad? At sometimes, nagiging ano na sila, eh, yung meron na bang kalakaran na doon na, na, para bang ano na, ano naging practice within that uh, presinto. So it's very hard no, for maybe a newbie to be integrated into a community na katiwali naman sa lahat na natutunan niya. So it's really a uh, challenge on your college no, to really train them. Ang ano ko nga is that, yung sa college ninyo, katulad ng sinabi ni Tal kanina, sabi niya kailangan pala ng napakadaming polis. Pero kung ganyan lang ang tinitrain niyo every year, at bumabagsak pa sa mga 100 plus graduates a year, eh paano natin matutugunan ngayon ang problema ng ating bansa na kailangan natin ng maraming polis. Anong mangyayari? So, hindi natin maaabot yung, <laughs> yung ratio na sinasabi mo. Di ba? Um, Pang-official yung kanila eh. Hindi naman pang PO1 eh. Ay, ay, ang problema natin sometimes, as you said, PO1, di ba? So, yeah. how di... Oo oh, nga eh. Ipapalik tayo sa kanya. <laughs> yeah, nga, oh. How do we now... Pero ito po, officials, meaning to say, you have to be the inspiration of all these PO1s. Yes, Paano yan? That, that should be the case. Really. That pertaining the case. to the question mo, kasi yun na nga, ang challenge eh. You will be assigned in a place, a strange place for you, in a community na iba po ang dialect, langwahe, ang kultura. You are, for example, I'm from Caloocan, from Man Metro Manila. Then I will be assigned in from Pang provinces in Mindanao or in Visayas. They have a different culture, different environment. And then... The sad thing is, there are some bad practices being observed for that certain, um, let us assume that, on that station, 
Sir, a newbie will be coming there. You will be proceeding to that area. So how will you change the system? Ang lagi kong binibigay na advice dun sa sa aming mga graduating, hindi kayang ibigay ng Philippine National Police Academy ng aming alma mater ang lahat ng kakailanganin mo. Baon-baon mo na yan kung ano yung natutunan mo sa bahay at sa community. The first school po na nagturo sa'yo, yung nanay mo, ang nagiging problema ho kasi ng isang leader, katulad natin, leader, may subordinate po kami. The most, most important thing, how to respect others and to look for their welfare. Saan po nagsisimula yun? Sa bahay. We will be accepting cadets already at the age of 18, 19, 20, and 22. 22 years nang nabubuhay sa labas. Then we will only strengthen their values, include their uh, involving, uh, let them learn the skills, but the character and the personality is already there. So, ibig sabihin, napakalaki pa rin po ng role ng community at ng family dun sa moral fiber ng officer na dadalhin natin. So, kahit po anong ituro ng akademya, minsan nangingigwabaw pa rin yung pinanggalingan niyang family. Kaya, I think, ang role na lang po ng PNPA, kasi hindi naman po siguro tinuro ng nanay na magnako ka anak, magdaya ka o manloko ka. Wala naman sigurong magulang na ganun. Ngayon po, yung ginagawa po sa academy, ini-strengthen po yung values. Okay. So pagdating po doon sa station, it's up already to the person. Kaya mahirap pong i-blame pabalik sa academy. Pagdating po doon sa lugar, sa community, meron po naman pong choice at discretion ng isang officer. Would he be eaten or taken by the system or okay. not? Okay, very valid. Yes, Ang punto kasi ganito, kung PO1 ka, na pasakay ka sa mobil, sasabihin ng sarhento, o kunin mo na yung ating mehoras doon. O di kaya, pag nagpatrolya na sa balintawak, ito na yung plastic gang para kay Cabo. No, no. Uh, how do we deal with that? Yun yung nakikita kasi eh. O kunin mo na yung kayo kay Cabo. Plastic gang. Ano, Sir Melo, no? si Kwan, si Senator Lacson, na, na, na sabi niya yan ang problema, hindi naman talaga sa training, sa role modeling nga ho. Pagkatapos ho ng six months training PO1, itinatang over po ng PPSC sa mga regional offices. Nandito na po yung field training officer, field training program. Ang nagsusupervise po dyan ngayon, yung mga field training officer na mga at least PO3 pataas. Gusto po pala kasi ni Senator Lacson yan, Yung field training officer na ipipiliin nyo, dapat ito ang mati ma matino. Kasi sila nag-guide sa mga recruit natin. Meron pa nga pong incident na tinuturuan pa nga pong sa illegal na kaagad, yung mga bagong recruit. Yun, na, na, na alarm si Senator Lacson. Sinabi po niya sa hearing, ando naman po ang P national leadership ng PNP. Kasi nga po, pag may problema, ang PO1 nakaturo sa amin ang, ang problema. Pero nung nagkaroon ng hearing, uh, good thing, si General Delon na point out niya, ito po, pagkatapos sa six months namin, tinaturn over namin for field training, magkakaroon, all, yan po yung role modeling, pero loosely supervised. Kasi nga po, yung field training officer, hindi rin po suportado ng national leadership, kulang. Ang dami dami po niyang may problema, ang ginagawa na lang po, after five o'clock, hindi na po na po. What happened after five o'clock, doon po ang problema. Wala ho nagsusupervise closely. Recruit pa lang po ito, field training. Hindi pa ho talaga, talaga regular na PO1. Kasi pagkatapos po ng field training, saka pa lang po sila gagraduate. Pero in the process, meron pong problema. Meron pong disconnect. May disconnect po doon. Kaya gusto ho ni Senator Laksan, palakasin nyo ang field training officer program ninyo. Ilagay ninyo ang, ang mga taong matino na mag-gagabay, na mag sa mga bago nating recruit. Oh, P ang PNP po yun, sir. Yun, pa, ma'am. Yan po. Okay, Commissioner. Eh, what about statements uh, allegedly encouraging police and other uniformed personnel to violate human rights for the purpose of accomplishing the goal, which is putting an end to illegal drugs? Well, um, the statements we know are actually sometimes contradictory. Sometimes saying you do it and then retracting and saying don't do it. You know, it gets it get, gets muddled and it's confused. No, when it comes to the to the ordinary policeman, is this an order? 
you know, it, it can turn out to be an order because it comes from a high official. So they're confused now what to do from their training and now from what are actually being said of their public officials. So I think it is about time that uh, high officials should calibrate what they say and really say what they mean and not engage in double talk. Because sometimes, uh, you know, we know but from the trainings of the policemen is that they follow orders, eh? Diba? You follow order. You follow closely what your superiors say. So the policemen, when they utter statements, or not only the policemen, but high government ranking authorities, should be very careful, especially when addressing policemen. Kasi my hierarchy, and then you always think that, oh, sinabi ito ng boss, so I should follow it. But then you said that you have your own values. You're not supposed to follow uh, illegal orders. That's a, that's a given, diba? So you have to use also your discretion and your, your moral fiber in making decisions on whether to follow or not what is being said. For me, it's really a, the, the policeman himself in the end, you know. You follow your conscience. And anyway, you're, you are uh, guilty uh, of whatever decisions you make. Ano yon? Kawawa ka, diba, in the end, no? Actually, in the academy, we are trained. We are training our cadets. Kahit na mapusan siguro sa uniform service, we are mandated to follow legitimate orders. So yung for those who are following illegitimate orders, they are bound for any li accountability and liability within the bounds of the law. So alam naman po ng kapulisan alin po yung tama at ang mali dahil meron po tayong rules of engagement. So if they, if they violate the rule, they are they are accountable for any possible consequences ng kanilang action. Yun po yung tinuturo sa academia, consequences of your violation. Kasi meron po tayong legitimate and illegitimate order. Kapag sinabi bang tumalong ka sa bangin, because it is my order, you will do that. That is an analogy. If you would like to take the life of a person, of a victim, whatsoever, even if it's a criminal, you know the consequences of your actions. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Napakaganda. Pero coming from CHR, don't you think it's about time to really review the PNP law? Because uh, let's say uh, a mayor is given three names for him to choose from, would be the chief of police. In the same manner as the governor is uh, given three names for him to choose from, would be the provincial director. Now, if the mayor or the governor are really that good, then chances are they'll come up with good decisions. Yeah. However, if the mayor or the governor are into illegal activities, from illegal gambling to illegal lagging to illegal drugs, then what have you? Ano kaya, Commissioner? Uh, we are very supportive of the PNP modernization law. No? And uh, of course, that's a very valid argument what you said. No? It actually depends on the person in the end, always. But you know, you cannot, it is, this is a system that we have actually um, adopted. But sometimes it is also, um, well, it is dependent on the kind of person who will make such a decision. Ngayon, we cannot always uh, say that there is a pull proof system. Eh. Wala namang ganun, walang perfect system. Eh. Sometimes it always has to boil down to the to the values, as I said, of the person who is making such a decision. But of course, we should lessen the degree of discretion. Nga. So maybe that should be reviewed, mm -hmm. in terms of the uh, uh, decision-making power of the mayor over the policemen. But supposed to be kasi, the policemen, the least that the police uh, rec that the recommend uh, these that are there are all good. Diba? Ang presumption is, ang list na sinabit mo sa mayor, eh, lahat magagaling yon kasi dumaan na yun sa proseso. So, kung sino man ang piliin ni mayor doon, dapat wala na siyang choice kasi magaling itong mga policemen na to. So, you can always argue that way also eh. So, it would actually be depending on uh, which point of view you're gonna take. Kasi there's no pull proof system for me. Ayun, ginawa natin yon in order to to ensure that the character of the police is civilian in nature and that kasi alam ng mayor ang pangangailangan ng kanyang supposed to be locality. So binibigyan mo siya ngayon ng, ng uh, discretion kung sino yon sa tingin niya sa tatlo ang makakabigay ng buting serbisyo sa, sa lugar na yon. Pero ang presumption is, yung tatlong yon magagaling at dumaan sa tamang proseso. 
hindi sa political uh, you know favors na binibigay okay uh, it's been said that honest cops are not given due recognition i'd like to believe there are honest cops yes. uh, but even serpico was shot and nearly killed by fellow cops na <laughs> they also have their families to attend to right pero Ewan ko lang, from the CHR point of view, what could be done at the moment? Because there is this problem today. Andiyan yung perception. May mga na-involved sa kalookan, nakakalungkot, PO1, PO3. Uh, paano po ito? Talagang nakakalungkot kasi uh, naniniwala ako na talagang maraming good men in uniform. Because I've been, I can say that I've been part of this... Um, award-giving body, yung recognizing policemen, the military, etc. And I've reviewed a lot of those shares of policemen. And I said to myself, wow, ang gagaling. Sabi ko, ang gagaling nitong mga to. Sabi ko, ang dami nilang crimes na nasosolve. Talagang makita mo yung commitment nila to the service of uh, yung ordinary people. Ang dami, ang daming police, talagang police officers, na, mga pol ordinary policemen na kasi sumali sila si Dios sa award uh, ano na to contest. So isa ako dun sa nag-review, judge ako ano. So sabi ko ang galing-galing nitong mga policemen. Kaya lang, bakit ang perception ng tao instead na matuwa ka na may policeman diyan sa umaaligid, natatakot ka. Nagoy may pulis. Ganun di ba? It's more dapat ay salamat may pulis. Dapat ganun yung attitude natin. So actually it's a perception war because the media projects also yung mga marami mga kasamaan lang na ginagawa. Maybe it's about time that the police should also, uh, you know, project the good uh, policemen who are there within the system at saka yung good practices ng mga ginagawa ng mga policemen. Di ba? So, I think it's a matter of perception kasi in any organization, there is always uh, good and bad, no? Uh, you know, eggs. Yeah. In that. So, we cannot really say na uh, what can we do ganun, ganun, uh, about this? I can only say is that we continuously make them aware, train them, give them uh, examples of good practices. Uh, maybe our, our um, officers should be inspirations to them, di ba? So, I think ang laki ng problema mo, ang laki ng responsibilidad. Kasi training the officers would be very important. And as you said, you know, identifying the middle management in the PNP who are actually training the, the recruits. Are very, are, these are steps that are very important that our government should take and the PNP hierarchy. So kami sa Commission on Human Rights, we are here to keep on reminding the police that these are... Uh, that human rights are universal and human rights must be respected at all times. Human dignity is inherent in everyone and that nobody can take a life arbitrarily. Yes. We cannot take that. Uh, we cannot be the judge and executioner. Yes. Actually, it's the people who allow the, the policemen to carry guns to protect them. It's, it's a privilege given actually to the men in uniform. Yung parang it's a privilege. I cannot carry a gun without a license, but the policemen, you are always licensed to carry a gun. So extra responsibility on them. So sa kami sa yun rights is always, you know, there to remind them and then of course to engage with the different training agents, uh, institutes of the PNP to include human rights in your curriculum at all times. Yun lang yun. Very well. Any message sa ating mga kasama ngayon? Anong mensahe ninyo mula sa PNPA at mula sa PPSC? Um, sa mga mamamayan po natin, lalo na po sa mga kabataan na gusto mong magdala ng pagbabago at makibahagi sa pagbabago ng kapulisan, ng Bureau of Jail Management and Penology at Bureau of Fire Protection, it's high time na po na mag-take kayo ng PNPA cut. Um, examination po namin is October 29, 2017 and for more details, um, pwede po kayo mag-join ng aming Facebook group sa the official Facebook group of the Philippine National Police Academy or i-visit po ang aming website sa www.pnp.edu.ph. Okay, mula po sa PPSC. Salamat po. Sa PPSC po, lagi po namin itinatagoy yung aming uh, institutional philosophy, yung core values po namin na uh, service. Actually, yung service po is an acronym. Yung S po is servanthood and love of country. Papasok na po yung patriotism po dyan. 
Meron po tayong uh, empowerment, meron po tayong excellence at responsibility and accountability. At higit sa lahat, yung letter B sa service, ito po yung valuing people and respecting human rights. Naka in place po yan, institutionalized po yan. Kaya pagdating sa usapin po ng human rights, pinipil po namin ito ang maging heart of our training. Para yung lahat po ng aming na ipoproduce ay uh, naka-instill sa kanilang consciousness yung kahalagahan ng, uh, ng buhay. At gusto, gusto ko rin po mailagdag bilang uh, mensahe sa atin, hindi lang po sa PPSC, sa buong kapulisan, na sana po ipalakasin po ang recruitment. Sabi nga po ng pulis nung naka, meron kami academic discussion, eh sabi niya, may problema ang training para bang yung luto ninyo ay kulang. Eh sabi naman namin, gaano man kagaling ang nagluluto o yung chef kung ang raw materials na binibili na yung recruitment ay defective. Hindi rin naman po tama. Kaya ang akin po ay, dapat po ay symbiotic relationship ang, PPN, ang PNP at saka PPSC para magtulungan. Iisa naman po ang adhikaan natin. Magkaroon tayo na, magproduce tayo ng isang ideal police officer or the community. Okay. Salamat po. Very well. Commissioner, doon ba sa mga nirereklamong pulis may inventory ba kayo ko ilan doon sa mga inireklamong pulis ang may higit sa isang asawa? <laughs> It could be a factor. Yeah, you know? that could be a factor. Yes, Without right. sounding sexist. I, I agree. I agree because uh, it has something to do with economics. Yeah. If you have a number of women at asawa pa, eh, ang dami mo sinusuportahan, eh magkano lang naman ang sweldo ng pulis? That's a very good, uh, that could be a good study, you know, that uh, maybe they can take into consideration when they actually, you uh, know, uh, graduate the uh, policemen. Yeah. Sa alumni association, pwede oh. ma-check yun. Dahil kung meron kayong graduates na iniririklamo, teka muna, ano ba talaga? Dahil sabi nga nila, without sounding sexist again, for every success, for every man's success, there's a woman behind. But for every man's failure, there's a woman in front. Uh, but uh, it's not necessarily true. It's not necessarily true. I'd like to thank everyone who took time out to be with us. Uh, it's indeed a pleasure to have you and Secretary Aluna a while ago. Uh, maraming maraming salamat po. Huwag po kayong maladala. Nagkataon lang, mas marami yung upuan ngayon kaysa sa mga tagasama, kasama natin sa media. But it's all right because we were able to talk about the pertinent issues. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you.